blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Every living thing, two of every sort shall you bring into the ark, male and female. Save them from the coming Armageddon. All the wild beasts shall be in your keeping. Two of every species from the beginning of time.
never left me You were always there When my world came crawling down, down, down I found you to be my very friend and help All I that you care for me Your faithfulness in me amazes me I don't have to wait for, for all you There's a day for it to stop. How many can say amen to that? If God tells you to do the impossible, don't look for who have not done it. Somebody say, I hear you. I don't care how many years you carry reproach. There's a day God takes the reproach away. Somebody say amen. amen. For Elizabeth, if you want to be inspired, don't look for who has inspired. Many of us have friends that are tear bearers. Leave them alone. Go and look for Elizabeth. You don't need who will weigh you down. 
you need who will lift you up somebody say hallelujah you don't need someone that is annoyed of what god is doing with you you need someone who will rejoice in your miracle Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Dr. Swether, for your kindness to bring me here this morning. I bring you all greetings from Africa. I thank God for what he's doing over there. The gospel of Luke chapter 1 is where my text is coming from. Luke chapter 1 About 18 years ago I came across this scripture Not because it had not been in the Bible But because I didn't see it as Something that was different from Christmas message But I saw it in a way that God made it known to me That for every trial we have there's a day for it to stop. How many can say amen to that? I read this scripture and it touched my life. And I'm grateful to God that I have preached it to countless millions in all over the world. But look at this verse here. Verse 24 of Luke chapter 1. The Bible says, and after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and he hid herself five months, saying, Thus had the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. Oh, say to your neighbor, your reproach is gone. Please, help me say it loud. Your reproach is gone. So many times when we face tribulations and trials and life of torture, especially when we are serving God. You know, you wouldn't believe this, sir. Uh, for 38 years and 3 months, I've been preaching now. But I never knew a Christian as a young man can face trial. I never knew you can be in the house of God and face tribulation. I never knew that Christians can fight one another or betray one another or even try to kill one another. Before I began to read the Bible that Lucifer was not from Tampa. <laughs> Lucifer was in heaven. And the second in, com uh, in command after Father, Son and Holy Ghost Lucifer was second in command because he was the archangel of worship. But the Bible says, and that this is what helped me most, and there was war in heaven. I said, oh my God, there, if there's war in my church, no problem. If there's war in heaven, there's war in my city, there was war in heaven. But coming back to the story I have just read, it took several years for this woman of God and her husband to get their need met. And she uttered the words of prophecy. Which I want you to retain in your mind. God has dealt kindly with me. Say that everybody. Please talk to me. I'm not a visitor here. I'm just preaching for the first time. Say God has dealt with me kindly. Now, now add the second word. He's taking away my reproach. Now say the two words together. God has dealt with me kindly. He's taking away my reproach. How many of you want any kind of reproach in your life to go away? Say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Now, for Elizabeth to say that, 
that today, March the second, you can time the day your change takes place. You can time the day the difference came to your life. You can carry a look for a long time in your life, but a day can come when you can say like today, Elizabeth is saying, this day, say that with me, the Lord has taken away my reproach among men. That's good for you, brother. It doesn't matter how many laugh at you before. It doesn't matter how many say, who are you before? God says from today, your reproach is gone. Somebody say amen. I thank God for that. Now, you know, to have a reproach may not be by your own approach. It could be what the enemy imposed upon you. Sometimes, people ask me, Hidahosa, why do good things, bad things happen to good people? I say because when bad happens to bad, nobody sees it. May I repeat? Why does bad thing happen to good people? Because when bad, ask me why. Point your hand, say why. I didn't hear you. Be bold, don't be afraid. Why what? Why do bad things happen to good people? So ask me a question loud. Because when bad happens to bad, nobody sees it. <laughs> Understand that? When something bad happens to a bad man, there's no difference. But when something bad happens to a good person, everybody knows. Did you hear what I'm saying? Oh yes. If you build this church, the world may not know too much. But you, if, you, if the pastor who built this church is not known all over America, but if this pastor were to steal a bicycle, everybody know. You understand what I'm saying? Satan doesn't advertise good things because that's not his job. Oh God, I, am I offending you? The devil does not advertise good things. That's not his job. His job is to kill, to destroy. But the good thing is, weak saints should have to advertise what is good. You didn't hear that. The devil doesn't talk good of good people. But good people should talk good of what is good. Somebody say amen. All right, let me go straight to the Bible so that you don't miss, make mistake. Look at verse 26. And in this, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin exposed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Uh, now, listen to this. God sent angel to Mary. How many of you are tired of seeing devil? Aren't you tired of seeing visitor call Satan, Satan, Satan? I think once in a while we all need to see Angel Gabriel. I like to hear you say amen. amen. Listen to what this angel said to Mary. Verse 28 says, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail! Uh-huh. Hey, say that everybody. Hey. Thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, I, I look forward to the day I will hear the church being told. Hey, instead of ooh, hell is better than shame. Mary, hey, you are highly favored. You are blessed among women. Somebody say amen. 
Now listen to the scripture carefully. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salvation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Say, that's good for me. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I'm not going to say too many things this morning, but I love the visitation of angel. I love the word, the word, you are highly favored. I love the word, God is with you. Oh, tap your chest, say God is with me. If God was not in this place, this man would have been dead by now. <laughs> For a long time. So it doesn't matter how many years you struggled to come out, you are going to come out. Sometimes it takes longer than expected. But delay is no denier. Sometimes the load you carry is heavier than you expected. But Jesus is still our burden bearer. Sometimes your fear is not out of fear. But out of what is this? But if it's from God, that's a good one. Mary said, what is this? What are you saying? Going to conceive, have a baby. I'm not married. I know no man. Angel said, it's favor. Thank God, that's favor. To have what you don't have and become your own is favor. Especially if your reproach is removed. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh God. Let me look at the scripture again. And he said, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And the, his kingdom shall be no end. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto, in, unto the angel, How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. That is one of the biggest problems today. God is telling me do the impossible. God is showing me big revelation. God is telling me my reproach is gone. God is telling Mary now said, God says, I'm going to conceive. God says, I'm going to give birth to a son. He shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest. But I'm not married. How shall this thing be? Maybe you are there this morning. Maybe you are hearing me on the radio. Or you are going to watch this program by television in Africa anywhere. All that God sent to you that are bigger than you is small for God. Anything too high for you is below God. But Mary asked a good question. How can God ask me to build a big facility like this when I have no money? And the angel answered, The Holy Ghost! Oh, somebody jump up and say, the Holy Ghost. I said, jump up and say, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> All the years, I've heard of the Carpenter's Home Church. I wonder whether the pastor was a human being. <laughs> then, Two years ago, he was one of our key speakers at ICBM. He opened his mouth and shook the thousands of people that stood there. And I said, well, if this man thinks he has trouble and he's shaking those with trouble, then his trouble is not too big. 
You will never, you never, never, I'm not sure you remember the message you preached to those 7,000 people that night. He gave them confidence. He gave us hope. He told us it doesn't matter how much we are bruised and shaken. God can steal your tempest. And I'm here this morning just in case you are passing through fire. Don't stop. Pass through. For David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Me. He didn't say you, but he said I. Shall fear no evil. Somebody say amen. amen. How can I fulfill a dream bigger than what I am? Holy Ghost. How can I have a car when my salary cannot feed me? Holy Ghost. How can I build a house when I lost my job? Holy Ghost. How can I live in peace when everything around me is peacing? Holy Ghost. How do I know I will be well when I'm very sick? Holy Ghost. Who will lift me up when I'm down and everybody around me is down? Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Let me hear you again. Say it again. When you are weak, who do you need? When you are down, who do you need? When you are poor, who do you need? When you don't know what to do, what do you need? When everything around you is falling down, what do you need? Everybody say, Holy Ghost! Let me hear you say, Holy Ghost! can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
when you are down, Holy Ghost. When you are poor, Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Somebody say big hallelujah. Listen to this. Sit down for a few minutes. Listen to this. Verse 35. The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. I quoted from your book to one of my books, Faith for All Life's Tom. You will see a chapter that concerns you there. I quoted you verbatim. That the devil doesn't touch his own like he touched what is not his own. But hear what the word of God is saying here. When anything in your life is too big for you to handle, hide under the shadow of the most high. He said the power of the highest shall overshadow you. That's why you are alive today. If it wasn't the power of the highest, they would have shown me your tomb. But the power of the highest is higher than anything else. Somebody say hallelujah. Well, let's set that one aside. What God sent me here for, I'm getting close to it. To this church this morning. This ministry... This ministry, I prophesy, cannot be destroyed by man. It's under the power of the Most High. I say that by the authority God put in my mouth. Carpenter's church was not built by man's ego. It was built by God's revelation. And I want to say this. If you allow the vision of this home church to die, God will not blame that man. He will blame you. Ask me why. Put your hand, say why. Everybody, I do this in my home church and I'm not afraid to do it here. Point your hand to me, say why. Now do this, say why will God blame me? Because God told him to do it, that you may continue to keep it. Did you hear me? I said, did you hear me? God told him to build this, that you may keep it. He's done his part. If you don't play your part, God will blame you, you will not blame him. Did you hear me? God said, Carl, build me a testimony house in Lakeland. Build it by my provision. Build it in the face of all odds. He obeyed God. Now the challenge is your own to fill this house with souls. The challenge is your own to bring men and women to worship God in this church. Somebody say big hallelujah. You say, that, how do I do that? The Holy Ghost. Lift your hand and say, Holy Ghost. Wave your hand and say, Holy Ghost. Sit down. Now listen to how to carry out the vision that is bigger than you. That's my message. How to carry out, say that everybody. The vision, I didn't hear you. That is bigger than me. Say it again. Don't be up. Tell your neighbor, I want you to learn how to carry out the vision. That is bigger than you. 
Listen to this. And be, listen to this. Behold. Verse 26. Let's read it together. One to go. And behold. Thy cousin Elizabeth. She also. Had also conceived. A son in her old age. And this is the sixth month. With her. Who was called barren. It doesn't matter whatever name they call you in the past. Let it be worse. You didn't hear me. Mary, what God is telling me to tell you is that your cousin Elizabeth, at her old age, who was called barren, has conceived. And the baby in her womb is now six months old. Who was called? I don't care what you called me before. Give me a new name. Your old name is not important. Your new name is very, very important. She was called barren. But now she's pregnant. And the baby is six months old. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, look at verse 27. For with God, verse 37. For with God. Oh, I didn't hear you. That's not in your Bible. For with God, what? For with God, what? For with God, what? Many times with you and I There are many things we cannot do Not with God Many times There are many things that God Gives us grace to do That flesh cannot do But thank God that with God Say I'm with God I didn't hear you Because I'm with God all things are possible i'm with god because i'm with god all things are possible shout hallelujah for with god nothing is impossible mary had that look at what mary did and mary mary said behold the hand of the lord the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city called Judah. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass, when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, sir, may I borrow you for one minute? Come, bring your Bible. Yes, come. Yes, sir. Listen to this. And Gabriel said to Mary, I've given you all the message God gave me for you. I'm going, but look at these words and hear it in your ears. God says, you, Mary, will give birth to a son. And the seed from you shall be called the son of the highest. But for you to know that what I'm saying is true, For you to know, come on, woman leader, come. You black dress woman, yes. Yes, okay. Thank you, ma'am. This is Elizabeth. You lady, come. Yes, please come. Don't be ashamed. This is your father's son. I met you here. This is, for example, Mary. This is Elizabeth. I am Zachariah. 
you are angel Gabriel. Angel Gabriel said, Mary, your cousin Elizabeth, who was called barren, now has six baby in her womb. She was called barren. She was called barren. Was, not now. God has taken her reproach away. Somebody say hallelujah. I don't care how many years you carry reproach. There's a day God takes the reproach away. Somebody say amen. But the Bible says this, Pastor. Mary arose. Mary had the sense to go to look for Elizabeth. If God tells you to do the impossible, don't look for who have not done it. Somebody say, I hear you. That is why. This is a secret today. Come on, son, Steve. No, come, sir, come. Please don't blame me, I'm at home. <laughs> if you are looking for a visitor, send for another pastor. <laughs> Every time I see your father in Oaruyu, and I look at what Ora Robert have done, and I look at what your father have I've been to this place three times without letting your father know. I've looked around this whole property. But any man that wants to defeat setback must constantly look at his success this is a success story this place is a success story yeah. this is not a defeated place right. this is tap your feet say this is a success story this is a success story where you are now it's a success story but every time i see your dad in tulsa and i look around the entire properties in ORU and look at the property here I look at similar story I look at the similarity of is possible when your dad did this he didn't know how to do it open your ears but God told him how to do it yes. now that it has been done no fear God is not only author, he's author and finisher. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. That's one story. You keep that within yourself. God who provided this place will sustain this place. Yeah. That's my prophecy number one. Number two. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com the world database of Christian preachers to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa 
America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. If you want to be inspired, don't look for who has expired. Elizabeth is a proof that what God is telling you is true. She was called barren, but she's now pregnant with six month baby in her. When you want your vision to be fulfilled, go and look for Elizabeth who was called barren who is no more barren if you want your vision to rise go look for elizabeth because the bible said when mary arrived in elizabeth's house the baby in her womb lifted up somebody shout hallelujah look for someone to lift up your vision Look for someone who will make your baby lift. Not somebody who will cause you abortion. Not somebody who will cause you miscarriage. Look for whose vision can challenge your vision. Look for whose story is a true story. Everybody say yeah! <laughs> Elizabeth is a proof that what God is telling you is true. Elizabeth is a consolation to barrenness. Elizabeth is the answer to your question. How can this thing be? Go and see Elizabeth. Elizabeth has a baby in his womb who stands up to say is right. If you don't want your vision to die, visit Elizabeth. Yes. If you want God to confirm what he's telling you, visit Elizabeth. Yes. Many of you have friends that are still barren. Leave them alone. Go and look for Elizabeth. Yes. Yes. Many of us have friends that are tear bearers. Leave them alone. Go and look for Elizabeth. Yes. You don't need who will weigh you down. Right. You need who will lift you up. Yes. Somebody say hallelujah. Yes. You don't need someone that is annoyed of what God is doing with you. You need someone who will rejoice in your miracle. Yes. Somebody say hallelujah. Yes. All of you follow me. Just a minute sir. Before you leave. Come back. Come back. Come back. Four of you come around me. I will soon let you go. Come and look at this. <sighs> she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And when and whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Yeah. Yeah. From now, the only visitor you must entertain is who will bring you joy. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? Don't go to where your vision will be blown. Don't visit who will tell you that's not God, that's the devil. Look for who will tell you, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I shall fear no evil. Yes. Look for who will tell you, though he slay me, yet shall I follow him. And I hear you, everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Mary, thank God you went to Elizabeth. Elizabeth is a reminder that whom God say he is, is whom he is. Yes. Yes. Elizabeth is a reminder that old age does not stop miracle. Yes. Elizabeth is a reminder that if God says something to you, no matter how long it takes, he shall bring it to pass. Yes. Lastly, Elizabeth is a fulfillment that God can visit man mm -hmm. with joy yeah. in the midst of sorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Stand up. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you. How many of you want to ask God to give you friendly Elizabeth today? Come forward right now. How many of you want your vision to become new? How many of you want God to give you new direction? How many of you want to say, God, you put me here and Satan will not take me away? How many of you want to say, God, here am I, use me? How many of you want to say, God, make me an instrument? Come forward right now. This is not just utter call for salvation. This is utter call for rededication. How many of you know that God is the one that put you in this ministry? How many of you know that God is the one that sent you to Cabinet Home Church? Get up and come and meet me here right now. Quickly, 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 quickly. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up, come closer, come closer, come closer. I want everybody, as many as can get up and say, I'm going to rededicate myself. I'm going to recommit myself to the vision of this place. I spent four hours last night praying on what to say to you. You know why? To whom much is given, much is expected. This is a vision we must not allow to die. God bet this place. We must be alive to keep it alive. How many of you can say amen to that? We build both city and village churches. If they had left me and said, God bless you, devil would have killed me. But they joined with me to say, Lord, what would thou have me do? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm going to believe God. No sickness in your body will follow you home. No pain in your body will follow you home. And everything that God asks you to do in this ministry, you will not be discouraged to go back. I want you to get up and say, God, you sent me to Carpenter's Home Church. Use me. God, make me a soul winner. God, make me an instrument of honor in your hand. If that is you, come forward right now. Get up from where you are and join us here. Thank you. Thank you. From this side, come forward. This is not Dr. Castrata's church. This is the church of Jesus Christ. He was just an instrument to do it. But this is the work of the Lord. Can I hear you say amen? Thank you. Are you all right there? Thank you. Fine. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Yes, hallelujah. Thank God for your commitment. Thank God for your commitment. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hand up. Just lift your hand up. Oh, lift your hand up. Lift your hand up. Lift your hands up. Oh, raise your hands. Say with me, Lord, here am I. Use me. Lord, here am I. Stir my spirit. Lift me up again. Give me joy in your service to follow you all the days of my life. I know, Lord, you put me here to work for you, to work for you, to labor in your vineyard. I commit myself afresh to you from now to serve you and do whatsoever you call upon me to do in faithfulness, in tithes. In offering, in giving, in preaching, in ministering. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. I surrender myself to you.
in Jesus name say loud amen, amen. put your hands down listen to this if you forget everything I have said today don't forget this God is the one that brought you to this church not man not him not Steve but God but God put them here to give you direction sometimes sometimes our faith is weak but God whom we are following is not weak sometimes we are discouraged but we are not discouraged because he who is in us is encouraging us I want you to rededicate yourself if every one of you here this morning will win one soul this time next month this church will be double God didn't give you this facility so you can stroll in and stroll out so you can beg God to give you a miracle then you go out and face obstacles you are to use here as a center of excellence to win soul for the kingdom of God how many will say God here am I use me amen I want you now to put your right hand on your forehead say after me my dear father by your stripes I'm healed from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet I'm healed in body in soul in spirit I'm healed now in Jesus name amen now put your hand there father I take authority and dominion over every foul attack of the enemy in these bodies from this minute I rebuke the devourer I cause the destroyer I command you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet be healed in Jesus name thank you Lord you are our healer and our restorer in Jesus name everybody say amen Amen. I thank you for your recommitment to God in service and in the call of his life ministry I pray that today upward all your friends will be Elizabeth who when you go to their home the vision in you will lift up not the person who you tell God just gave me a new car and he says what are you sure you're a Christian no you need someone who will stir your vision up somebody who will spur you to action somebody you say I'm going to evening service who will say I'm going to not the one that we asked you were you not there last week you need a challenger for good and not a destroyer of evil amen 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 Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation 
by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And the Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. 
and I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that by the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odicha. And we went to put posters all over Odicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Hose university all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and i thank god it's particularly good for us whites british because in britain uh people are rather skeptical these days You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis we went to Baltimore flew to New York and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, 
It was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90-seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the hood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa. You say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft, lifted his I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down five minutes time. The pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were under, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold plated aircraft. He called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, Give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here, there won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned, his name Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God, could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that 
um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness i was i did a meeting for dr maurice serrillo in 2010 and just before i spoke in his world conference they said uh, oh miracles don't happen in america because they have a lot of doctors it happens in the third world well when i took the microphone i just shared my testimony 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare i took it from the late Agusho. i believe in the transference of spirits and i believe strongly like god told moses i will take off the spirit that is upon you and i will put it upon the 70 i'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Agusho. making a movie of the archbishop will really really help the next generation because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland and when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop in Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him Pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days he was riding past and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, hey, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that thing. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg, what did I talk? Again? Again, again! Hey! Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Um, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes, in the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fact why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Early in the morning when I rise. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? I send it to your throne. What's the girl's name? I will send it to the I said, It's Inuarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson the outside. He said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, her daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life. My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Another gave birth to me after a year and three months in the womb. So, my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave birth to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand it. I couldn't wait. 
and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shago and all that and i said mm, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just made and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came. I said, where is the child? You said the child is there. And I called him to the room. I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two girls and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com
Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I would like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. 
and flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a compound where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Benson Daosa. Now, Bensi Ndaosa childhood. Bensi Ndaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and the United States while working in Bada Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akpos' small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself, and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also President of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, President of Idaosa World Outreach, and President of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot. Uh, university in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and 
a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robert University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He's also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supertax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto Evangelism, our Supreme Tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin in Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa, who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is, in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His body for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. 
Ida also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to award leaders leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom had bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998 now i'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your, your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of his son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used 
to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video, to bless all the people. And make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contacts, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.